In a 2023 experiment, two sides were pitched against each other to develop a blue ocean strategy to introduce American bagels in Paris, a city that strangely lacked good bagels. On one side, a team of INSEAD MBA students spent a week discussing and debating ideas, elaborating on some and manually putting them together as a proposal. While the other side did all that in just 60 minutes, this was artificial intelligence. AI could come up with creative ideas to tap into the contextual market. The results from both sides were remarkably comparable. The students were understandably rattled by the idea that a high-level task such as strategy making could, effectively, be automated. The experiment itself is a glimpse into a future of AI in business strategy. The biggest reason why companies fail is, is it's a strategic failure. Right? It's not about operations, it's not about finances, it's not about anything else. I don't want to sound that one is more important than the other, because that's not my point. Uh, my point is simply to say that it's different. It tells you two things. It's difficult to get your strategy right. That's the, the first interpretation. The second one is the consequences of not getting your strategy right is, you know, it's, it's essentially going to sink your company. Right? Um, and the consequences are significant. And if you think about it, this is probably the, should be the most challenging for machines out of all the other areas in business. In business, these decisions are pivotal. They require cognition, intuition, and foresight. Managers have to navigate complexities and predict future outcomes. So can AI evolve to comprehend these nuances and rival the insights and judgment of human leaders? Consider this chart. In the past, automation focused on routine, codifiable tasks. Today's AI models are stepping into areas we once thought were solely human domains. Areas that were traditionally seen as requiring human judgment and creativity. And AI is getting quite good at it. Trained on diverse data sets, foundational models can process large amounts of varied, unstructured data. It's how AI excels at trend detection, signal recognition, and pattern identification at scale. It's how LLMs like Gemini, GPT-4, Llama, and Claude can respond intelligibly to prompts on which they have not been explicitly trained. And that paradigm has been very successful, but might not be the best suited for strategic decisions because it needs a lot of data and the data needs to be uh, applicable to the decision at hand. But we know from strategy, uh, strategic decisions, oftentimes there's not a lot of data or the circumstances are different from those in the past. But once you have the model, you need little or no additional data to apply them to a new task. And this is where we think an interesting opportunity for use in strategic decision making, because then you could apply the large language model in a setting where there is limited uh, data available, but still use its capability. With the costs of computational power dropping and the rise of AI-based GPUs, the growth of these models is set to explode. The 2024 AI Index highlights that even though training these advanced models is becoming pricier, investment in generative AI is skyrocketing. These developments point towards future machines with multifaceted and sophisticated language abilities, and more broadly, an increased capacity to learn. Human beings are very good at reading between the lines, and let's not make a mistake. I mean, human beings are still better at doing it because they also use visual cues to do that. But machines uh, might have gotten better uh, because of these bi-directional transformers, simply because it probably enables the machine to also read between the lines a little bit, which is what we call as context, right? So these answers need to be context specific. And what do we mean? It's like, okay, look, you, you know, by putting a bunch of words together, I can sense where you're going with it. Even though in languages like English, the same word can mean multiple things. Reading between the lines isn't enough when it comes to business. 
strategy decisions are about answering the big picture questions. Like, what should firms do to outcompete others? Unlike routine decisions, strategic ones are often made with limited information. They involve factors that are outside of a firm's control. The stakes are high. And because managers are trying to answer these big picture questions, uh, which integrates many of these functional areas together, any sort of changes that you sort of bring in as managers uh, naturally has this long feedback cycle uh, loop, right? It's not like you, you know, make a decision and then you know tomorrow whether it worked or not. It's going to take a few years. So the combination makes it a very tough one. Let's consider Herman Miller and Walmart, two organizations with vastly different approaches. While Herman is focused on iconic designs made from premium material, Walmart is optimizing for functional and cost-efficient mass-produced furniture. When making strategic decisions, Walmart would focus on efficient production to reduce costs and negotiate better deals with suppliers. And Herman Miller would rather focus on R&D, ergonomics and quality. It's a complex dance of prediction, intuition and calculated risk. It's about being better prepared or making outlandish moves or being more adaptable to changing conditions. This is probably why we see so many parallels between business strategy and war. Strategy is about not winning battles, it's about winning the war. And these functional areas might be battles, or these divisions might be battles, these geographies might be battles, but it's about winning the war. Right? And strategy is, integrates these battles and ultimately the goal is to win the war. Much like their historical counterparts in warfare, modern managers view strategic decisions through two critical lenses, formulation and implementation. Today's AI models are moving up the decision-making value chain, steadily making their way towards recommending specific options and prescriptive outcomes. In our Bagel in Paris example, the AI machine wasn't just efficient and quick. Some of its suggestions were unique, insights the human team might have missed due to their unconscious bias. So one way to think about what modern AI does is that it's not only giving you predictions, it's also trying to put different pieces of disparate information together. And if you think hard about this, this is also what human beings do. New ideas are essentially recombined versions of older ideas applied in newer contexts. Can machines do that with uh, this large corpus? Well, the corpus is large. There, by definition, there has to be many combinations with which these ideas can be recombined. From this perspective, machines should have the ability to recombine ideas much better, something that human beings have been doing for ages. But now you've scaled up the corpus by so much uh, that the possibilities of recombination should also be that much higher. But what makes an idea a good or a bad strategy? Strategy can be a complex domain where there are no right answers and it is only retrospectively that one can establish cause and effect. And so far, uh, the process of forming theories has largely taken uh, place in the minds of the decision maker. But it might be that AI can be used for generating new theories that we show here. And it could be that AI might help develop more nuanced and intricate strategy theories founded in better predictive accuracy on the one hand, uh, rather than just by humans. But this also raises the possibility that it might eliminate the need for theories altogether. But when provided with clear rubrics for evaluation of choices, could machines tell a bad idea from a good idea? Professor Yunjin Kim recently ran an experiment to explore how AI generates and evaluates entrepreneurship strategies. In the experiment, GPT was prompted to evaluate the business plans that were accepted by a startup competition and graded by established VCs. GPT had to either build over the existing proposals or suggest alternative theories to the same business problem. And what we see is that GPT outperforms entrepreneurs, especially when the idea that it comes up with differs substantially from what the entrepreneur came up with, rather than a, an incremental tweak or adding a feature uh, to, to the entrepreneur's business plan. 
What we see is that GPT evaluates the ones where they were coming up with alternative theories rather than improving upon the entrepreneur's theory or the original as the best plan. Now, of course, the bigger question here is, does this actually correlate with human benchmarks if we look at investors with experience? This was consistent with the human evaluations of the final outcomes, as the best GPT generated and selected plans receive higher investor scores across all outcomes. However, it's worth noting that AI's comfort zone is in domains where there is a range of right answers, known unknowns, and causality can be analyzed, so it plays well to data. If the machine essentially tells you something, uh, the odds of it being the right suggestion could be uh, on either extremes. For one, if there is wisdom around, let's say, a particular area and that's persisted over ages across different corpuses, if the machine tells you something, there is a strong sense in which it might be right, uh, provided these corpuses are right in the first place. While setting a rule book for the best decision might not be possible, managers can work with AI to narrow down the options to their benefit. Once again, even over here, just like ideation needs to be human guided, we are at this point in which even solutions need to be human guided because the machine cannot understand context unless the human gives it the context. Even when you're talking about applying some of these ideas that are generated, it has to be human guided because if you maybe give it the right context, it's going to help you to you know, zero down on maybe the set of options that are most likely to be profitable or most likely to have a larger upside. Which is what you would be thinking if you're a decision maker at Herman Miller or Walmart. Competitive advantage isn't just about being better than someone else. It's about trying to be different from everyone else. Yet in either organization, AI doesn't replace you as a decision maker. It would support you instead. It would sift through the noise of massive data sets to highlight what's most critical. If you think about winning the war, not all battles are worth fighting. Not all battles are worth winning. Because think about strategic decision making. You don't want to be solving all the problems. You want to be prioritizing them. And presumably, you don't have the resources to solve all problems. So the question is, can AI in its current form help you prioritize these problems? There is plenty of evidence to suggest that strategic decision making will still require the human touch. So, in general, we know that Formula One teams uh, use uh, extensively algorithms to predict. For instance, you know, uh, when it is best to go out on the track uh, for setting the lap time or pit uh, to change the tires, etc., etc. But still, the role of the chief strategist, the human chief strategist in Formula One is extremely important to, to win, right? Because basically, you know, there is this human ability to process this qualitative information, like, you know, the feeling of the driver with certain types of tires or with some track conditions. So it's uh, despite, you know, the tendency of some organizations to move radically towards some data-driven decisions, uh, the contribution of human is still there, you know, in terms of, you know, judgment, intuition, gut feeling, and especially, you know, where, where and the training data sets are not so rich, right? So it is true that you can use generative AI, but still the ability of humans is still important. For a, somebody in the, who's already a CXO, who's making strategic decisions, there could be this limitation that comes about because, you know, the experience puts uh, blinders on and makes him or her turn a, turn a blind eye to other kinds of strategies which could probably be better, at least to be on the safer side, maybe just as useful. Going back to our 2x2 two two chart, one thing is certain. Strategic decision-making isn't human-exclusive anymore. AI is currently tasked with decision assistance and not autonomous strategic decision making, at least not yet. Perhaps the future AI machines will help managers operate at a higher human function to be more anticipatory, adaptive and agile. <laughs>